Hi, my name is Brad Taylor, and I just finished my freshman year at RHS. Um, I've been a part of District 196 schools now for 10 years, and I'm going to give you a glimpse today of what's actually going on inside these schools. Um, despite the board's attempt to deny it, District 196 schools are quickly becoming a place where promoting activism is actually more important than promoting education. I'll take, I'll take you back to my first day at RHS this fall. The principal came out and gave us a heartfelt speech about equality and standing together. Um, he began to list countless races, such as Latino, Asian, expressing how much they matter and how important they are. But never once did he mention a race or identity that reflects me, or half the kids that were in the class. Now, members of the board, I know you haven't been to school in a while, and I know, most of the peop I know none of you, or most of you, don't have any kids left in the school district. Um, but you must admit how uncomfortable it will be to be characterized just by your skin color on the first day of school and be thought that you were wrong just because of your skin color. So I'll never forget the look one of my friends gave me from across the room as we were sitting there listening to this blatant bias being expressed in the so-called equity statement by the leader of our school. To be clear, I don't need you to tell me that I matter, but hearing the condolences given to other races and leaving just one race out, it inevitably you'll start to feel like you've done something wrong. And in our principal's attempt to unify us, he instead created unwarranted boundaries and barriers between his students, pitting us against each other based on characteristics that we can't control. In another separate instance, I was told that writing all lives matter on the whiteboard was political and could be seen as offensive. When I questioned the teacher after class, she told me that she didn't have an answer and she just had to erase it, and it was quickly erased. There are political signs all over RHS specific, about specific races that matter, specific sexual orientations that matter, and specific perspectives that matter. But when I questioned the RHS administration about how these signs were political, they told me that they were supporting human rights. So when I questioned why the equity statement couldn't represent all students, they told me that to even ask that question was outlandish and offensive. And they, when I asked why that was, they told me, quote, whites have a pretty good situation right now, unquote. So is that not racism? Disregarding my question merely because of the color of my skin. To be honest, after enduring a year of the people in charge telling me that I'm a racist and I'm privileged and pointing out our irreversible differences, I've never noticed race more. And it's becoming the first thing I notice when I meet someone, which has never before been the case. RHS administration confidently told me that RHS students and staff are happy with their equity statement. But from the ex my experience in talking with other students, this is not the case. The compilation showcases a range of encounters featuring individuals often labelled as woke, highlighting their tendency to become easily agitated and engage in confrontational behaviour driven by their strong beliefs and ideologies. The discussion starts with a person expressing their religious views, which are immediately challenged by another participant. The challenger questions the validity of the beliefs being shared, leading to a tense exchange. As the conversation progresses, the debate grows increasingly hostile. Voices are raised and interruptions become frequent. The participants struggle to articulate their points while undermining each other's perspectives. This intense interaction illustrates how deeply held religious convictions can ignite strong emotional responses and lead to confrontational exchanges. Um, I've been coming here for five years now and I was going to talk to you about some practical things that I thought you could change about 3210. But I've changed my mind. Um, I've been really confused over the last five years as to why we spend 45 minutes to an hour of every public meeting talking about how great everyone is and how great everything is in the schools. And now I've figured it out. I've figured it out because all these people came here to defend you all from hurtful words. This is obnoxious. Let me just say, there is one goal for the educational system. It should be to prepare children to enter careers to be productive members of society. It is not a counseling session. It is not a self-help area. It is not somewhere to find yourself. And we should not be led by the children, for goodness sake. The children are called dependents for a reason. They depend on us who have fully developed brains. You cannot feel your way through life. The issues that we are talking about, we are bringing you statistics. We are talking about scholastics. We are talking about funding. We are talking about busing. We are talking about trying to figure out how to make our children be as successful as possible. And I am sure that that is your goal. And what we have been called tonight is what they're claiming that we're saying to children. We're having an adult conversation. There are not children in this room. We aren't going into the schools and calling them names. They call us Marxists and hateful and bigots and everything else under the sun. Well, let me tell you, 
less than 5% of the entire population of North Carolina identifies as LGBTQ. You guys all claim you want democracy. Well, you know what democracy is? It's the majority plus one. It's 50 plus one. You know what? More than 50% of the people in this state claim that they believe in God, almighty God who made us male and female, God who made marriage between a man and a woman, God who said that we must protect our children. The fact that we can stand up here and we know, we can brag about all of the wonderful graduations, but we know, we know the statistics. 50% of children did not pass their end of grade test. What are we celebrating? We have, we have children coming up here telling us how horrible the mental health crisis is. Why? Most of us went to public school and all of our all of our peers are not in mental health crises. We have to ask ourselves, what are we doing to our children? I'm going to say we are discussing things with them that they are not emotionally, intellectually, and morally able to handle. That is what is causing the anxiety. That is what is causing the depression. That is what is causing the confusion. We need our children to be able to be children, to be able to be innocent, to be able to enjoy childhood and not know all of the drama and all of the difficulties in adult life. The next segment shifts focus to a discussion on gender identity. In this scene, one person shares their views on gender, which are met with immediate and visible frustration from another individual. The disagreement quickly escalates as the person with opposing views becomes increasingly agitated. They struggle to maintain composure while expressing their anger and frustration. This encounter highlights the emotional volatility that can accompany discussions on sensitive and personal topics like gender identity. The frustration and hostility displayed reflect the challenges of navigating such complex and deeply personal issues. It's not difficult, is it, Angelica? I mean, that is what a woman is. I mean, I don't know why you're obsessed with defining it. Like, what, what is a man? Like, why do we need these arbitrary... A man is a male adult human. I mean, that's it. Right, OK, I don't know that we need... These, these, these are just these biological facts, but they're just facts. They're not, they're not arguable points, are they? Well, but you, I think we have a right to self-identify. And you said as you what? want to... As if, what? Well, if you'd on. like to be a woman, you can identify as a woman. I don't know why there is such an issue around... We've that. literally just seen a male rapist use that scam to get himself put into a female prison where he could attack vulnerable women inside a female prison when even his ex-wife said it was all a scam. Which is a terrible, very distressing, isolated incident. And I think it's easy to take that and say, that means that no, no, no one can identify as a woman. But and it's that's, not an isolated not incident, though. But, but it, it's... it's 42% it's a... of, of trans-identifying prisoners in prison are in there for sex crimes. There's actually an advantage evidently to identifying as a female because they never identify as male because somehow male prisons seem less appealing to them. It's really weird. Anyway, but is it, that's is it, lim is it limitless, right this self-identity? It, it, it's not totally limitless. What's the so limit? when, you're, when you're talking about International Women's Day, I don't know why we take the, the conversation around International Women's Day and make it about this. But if anyone there's had, so many benefits right, But if to anyone, according day. to you, can identify as a woman, anyone can, right? I, I don't see a problem with... Just literally put the hand up and say, I'm a woman. But it, it's not an easy thing to do to go out into Actually, the world. It's very easy. Very easy. It's very easy. <laughs> you might think it's easy to say, but to decide to do that, to say what this is, is doing it involved. Whatever that person decides, but to Doesn't go out into the world up? and say I, I don't identify as perhaps the sex. So I was why born can't as, I identify? Not... Okay, why can't I identify as a black lesbian? <laughs> <laughs> well, firstly, I mean, it was well, I'm serious. Her. I'm serious. If I can identify as anything mm -hmm. without any need to prove I'm actually what that is. I, I Why think, can't I, on International Women's Day, say, I'm Piers Morgan, I'm a black lesbian? I think taking it to a kind of absurd no, no. status... No, I think, where I think that's talking what... You, about quite a, a with respect, I think change. that you've already opened the absurdity door by saying it is limitless, you can do what you like. Anyone can say... I'm a woman. So I simply ask you, why can't I? I mean, this point kind of ridicules trans people to an extent. Actually, I think, I think what I you think said ridicules trans people because actually people who, who go through the full process of transition, who actually go through what we used to call a sex change, which I don't think you can muck around with original biology, but those who actually go through surgical procedure over a number of years, I've got great respect for that very difficult journey they go on. I have zero respect for people who just wallop their hand up and go suddenly... I'm a woman and I want all the rights that a woman has and I want to compete, say, in sport. I'm a six-foot, four-inch athlete, sprinter, swimmer, whatever, who's competed very mediocrely in male sport and I want to come in and crush women in swimming pools and in sprinting events and break all their records, perhaps irrevocably, just by saying... I'm a woman. I think that is the absurdity you were talking about. No, but can you imagine you coming to our restaurants and, and then you get some people...
coming to your table and trying to disrupt your evening. It's a, it's abuse. I'm going to start. Me. I am going to start running into vegan restaurants. That's fine. Go I'm for it. That's just shouting that's your, that's your and being right, annoying right and to grabbing this. tables and so you can't eat your gruel and just see how you lot like it. I'm, I'm going to go to your house and chop paint Piers. all over it. Piers. You've got a right to price. Oof! You've got me another one. Take it off your bingo. Cast it. Take it off your bingo, sir. <laughs> but where's the salt? Where's where's it? Won't need any of this gruel. Let's put that to one side. But I will have a bit of steak just to. You didn't salt it though. You see, all you've achieved <laughs> is you've made me want to do this. Just that's, eat that's lovely. absolutely fine. Mm. You go mm. for it. Mm. <laughs> Moving on, the interactions centred around social issues. In one notable scene, an individual aggressively confronts a group of protesters who are advocating for a social cause. The confrontational approach is evident as the individual demands explanations and expresses their disagreement in a hostile manner. The protesters, initially caught off guard, attempt to explain their position calmly. However, the aggressive demeanour of the individual leads to a breakdown in communication, resulting in shouting and name-calling. This sequence underscores how confrontational behaviour can disrupt meaningful dialogue and escalate tensions in discussions about social issues. Do you, are you supposed to be Jesus? Is that your whole thing? I am Jesus. Thank oh, you, everybody. That's awfully heretical, but okay. Well, I heard you kept saying my name, so I wanted to show up. You know, okay. I'm busy trying to save the planet from this apocalypse going on, you know what I mean? Jesus H. Christ, but uh, you can just call me Josh. All right, uh, why don't you ask me the questions? I'm sure you have plenty of them. Okay, what's the Hebrew word for uh, father? Man, I, you know, let me tell you something. Uh, Abba. I'm sorry? Abba. That's the Greek word for father. Yeah, Greek, you know, whatever. Point I'm trying to say is this, yeah, man. Yeah, you don't look, even make a good Jesus. Wh whatever. What, what language did Jesus speak? Aramaic. Okay, tell me one thing but in Aramaic. But you have to understand, man, I have to come here to speak to you now. You don't speak Aramaic, otherwise you and me would be speaking Aramaic. Oh, okay, I have to right. speak this kind of dumbed-down stuff for the you. The enemy has come to lie, steal, cheat, and destroy. What did Jesus say? Uh, I said, love your neighbor. Wrong. The and enemy how has is that come, working out, by the, the way? The enemy has come uh, to lie, steal... I'm pretty sure steal, I said, love on, your neighbor, love God, You're not even a good God, Jesus. It's, and, one, of the most, and love it's one of the most popular verses in the Bible. John 10.10, 10, the enemy has come to lie, steal, see, and destroy. Who wrote that I, thing, anyways? I have I come to give life Bible. and life more abundantly. Okay, so you don't even know the scriptures, and you're pretending to be Jesus, but tell me why you're here. I am Jesus, and I didn't write the scriptures. I lived them. And, and the main thing I want to tell you is this. I said, love your neighbor and love everybody. That's something that you guys really need to figure out. And I know I got some of my fan clubs. Let's hold on a second. Hold on. My, what, what are those two verses? My name was love Yeshua. Your let's, let's, let's love your neighbor as yourself. Where is that in the Bible? I don't know. I didn't write yeah, it. Leviticus 19. Hold on. I didn't I thought, write the Bible. I thought you're Jesus. I'm you, Jesus. You, you know it's the Torah, about right? Me, not by me. Hold on a Look, second. The point is this, my friend. Jesus, I said, love Jesus your was your neighbor a, and love you're everybody. You're backpedaling so fast because you don't no, even no, know no, the Torah I'm as a pretend Jesus. I'm saying the same thing I was saying the first time. You see, nobody believed me the first time I was here and then you fucking crucified me. I was just trying to say this, man. Love everybody. Love your neighbor. Stop killing everybody. You don't even know the verse. Genocides are bad. How about that? You want to put that in the Bible? You can add that as well. So, okay, so you want to stop killing people who are just sitting there. I, that would be probably are you, are you a good idea. Are you trying to connect with Israel Hamas? Is that your uh, thing? Pretty or? much the whole world okay. at this point. we got a lot of issues. Ke uh, Dr Kendrick, Drake, I mean, what else is going on around here? Look, okay, so I will wait, say this. On. They but, not like us, and this is pretty obvious. But I will. Uh, look, the point I'm trying to make to you, uh, what was your name again? Charlie? Chad? Chadley? I thought you are Jesus and everything, Chadwick? man. No, man, I'm too busy. i got an actual job oh, to do. Oh, yeah, so you believe in a like God is too busy. If, not, if, if I were not like you, I'd be able to kind of sit here and pretend that you're the worst Jesus I've ever seen. I'm the only Jesus. And I will say this. You're the only Jesus, only one. Matter of fact, and I live in all of you, and thank you for making time for me, by the way. It's been a while. Look, I would say this. If you really are a, a, a fan of mine and you're in my fan club, just just be a nicer person, man. Well, just where does be, it say to just, be nice in the Bible? It's pretty much all over no, there. I mean, that, that was kind of what the What does point, the word nice mean in Latin? The point I was trying to make. It means make ignoramus. Where does it say? Love, wait, in the deck. Can you tell me the Ten amor, Commandments? How about amor. Let's go for the Ten Commandments. Want to do it together? Since you're Jesus, let's go. Right. What are they? Uh, don't be an asshole, number oh, one. Okay, hold on. How about no, number one through on. ten? Don't be an asshole. Wait, hold on. No, actually, that's, that's not one of the Ten Commandments. That's pretty much summed it up. I am the Lord that you delivered you from Egypt. You shall know the gods before me. You shall know the craven in images. Bible, I said, you, you shall never take the Lord's name in vain. You shall honor your mother and father's name live long in the land in which you are in. You shall honor the Sabbath day and keep it holy. You shall not murder. You shall not steal. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife. You shall not give your neighbor's house. We got a synagogue here. One and a two and a three. We got a synagogue. You don't like the Decalogue because you don't know the Decalogue. Okay. Give it up for the sinner, everybody.
<laughs> Give it up for the sinner, right. everybody. Good job. Another segment presents a disagreement over political correctness. An individual challenges someone's use of language, accusing them of being insensitive. The conversation begins with a critique of specific language choices, but quickly devolves into a heated argument. Both parties engage in a back-and-forth exchange, with accusations and counter-accusations flying. The escalation of the argument highlights the polarized views on what constitutes acceptable language and behavior. The clash over political correctness reflects broader debates about how language can be used to include or exclude individuals based on their identities. Instances of unprovoked aggression are also featured. In one scene, a person confronts another in a public setting, demanding that they justify their beliefs. The aggressor's approach is confrontational and their rhetoric is designed to provoke a reaction. The individual being confronted appears taken aback and struggles to respond to the aggressive questioning. The scene demonstrates how unprovoked hostility can create a charged atmosphere and escalate conflicts. The aggressive behavior serves as a reminder of how confrontations over beliefs can quickly spiral out of control when approached with hostility. Why is it funny? Because it is funny. You know it is funny. It's you have a funny. little smirk yourself before I actually you, don't you find this kind yourself. of thing funny. I think no, it's, come on. I actually think it's quite it, sad. It, it, let, it's let not me, sad. It's comedy. Let me bring him... It's, it's, it's satire comedy. Well, maybe. You know it is. I, you know it is. I'm not, you know it is, Piers. I've been an actor for 13 years. George, you know George, damn right I know how this industry works. George, let's bring in Riz, who's chuckling away because you find all this terribly amusing. <laughs> uh, Riz, you supported Just Stop Oil. Uh, no one at Wimbledon today supports Just Stop Oil. They just think you're a bunch of idiots. I know you weren't there today. You were shouting at the Royals up in Scotland. Why do you support this kind of protest that we're seeing at all these sporting events? Oh, I'm not sure I've completely condoned that. And to be clear, I'm not speaking on behalf of Republic today. I speak on behalf of No More Royals. But absolutely, we are protesting in Scotland. And Piers, you're going to, like, you've just been going on at these guys at Just Stop Oil about why are you disrupting ordinary people and why don't you target the right thing? And we've been doing that, uh, shouting at the king. Why do you support that method of protesting? Why don't you come out and condemn Just Stop Oil like Trevor Nielsen, who was funding some of this stuff before, has suddenly realised the pennies dropped. It doesn't work. Uh, I'd like to talk about coronation because it's but uh to respond to that question uh we're in a climate crisis it's horrifying i'm terrified for my future and just the foil are one of the only uh groups of people at the moment who are doing anything about that uh but as i say i'd like to focus on the issue well i'm sure you would i'd like to focus on what's just happened because it's indicative of of a summer of protest by people who think that they can convert people to their cause even if people are inclined to do so, we're now at a point where you can tell from the audience reactions at these events, they literally want to garrot them. And what worries me is it's going to lead, it is going to lead to bad situations if this carries on, because people are going to just, just going to take the law into their own hands. <laughs> uh, sorry, that's stupid. Sorry, I, I well, you don't have to keep don't swearing, to to Riz, with, uh, with respect. If you want to talk about the protest... Riz, yeah, don't, my you don't, you don't have enough. to keep swearing. Do you want to talk about the protest yeah. or do you want to say uh, that protests shouldn't happen and we should all suck it up and deal with it? Because that's easy for you, right? Like, you've been dealt a pretty good hand. I believe so in peaceful I, protest. Uh, but I actually care. I believe in, okay, in peaceful protest. So do you I want don't... to talk about the peaceful protest today, I believe then? in peaceful protest. I don't believe in wrecking ordinary people's lives as they're going to work, as they're going to hospital, as they, on some cases, going to funerals. I don't think that, that when they cool. pay for sporting yeah. events that they maybe save money for all year long. That's fine, because neither those, Republic they should have or those No More Royals did that today. I'd love to They shouldn't to have talk it ruined that. by a bunch let's, of... Let's talk about it. There was a Republic up at one end who were... Uh, a massive crowd, far bigger than any of the monarchists. I mean, the streets are pretty much empty. Uh, I haven't had a chance yet to look at any of the coverage, uh, yeah, but I sure. think you'll see that yeah. because uh, there is pretty much nothing going on on the monarchist end and the Republic demo is enormous. Uh, and then there's No More Royals who did a banner drop, uh, chanting, can I swear? I just did. Uh, the king feed the hungry, because that's what we want to talk about, right? Uh, you know what, you know what Riz, for a very... They've, they've done this... You know what, Riz, for a bright young woman who's getting a very good, expensive education, you do behave like a complete foul-mouthed idiot. You don't do yourself any favours. Why do you think coming on a show like this and just repeatedly using the F-word, why do you think that makes you look any better? Yeah, I did a... The compilation also includes moments where disagreements turn physical. In one instance, a debate about a social issue leads to a physical altercation between participants. The argument, initially verbal, escalates into a scuffle as individuals physically engage with one another. 
This scene underscores the intensity of the confrontations and the potential for physical violence when strong beliefs and emotions come into play. The physical nature of the confrontation highlights the extent to which ideological disagreements can manifest in real-world conflict. In one scene, a person becomes enraged over a minor disagreement, leading to a shouting match. In another, a heated argument about a social justice issue results in individuals exchanging insults and threats. The rapid succession of these confrontations emphasizes the prevalence of agitated responses and the tendency for discussions to devolve into hostility. Throughout the compilation, the portrayal of these individuals is designed to emphasize their agitation and confrontational nature. The focus on extreme examples of behavior serves to highlight the intensity of the ideological clashes and the emotional volatility that accompanies these interactions. By presenting these encounters in a particular light, the content aims to cast doubt on the validity of the viewpoints expressed and provoke strong emotional responses from viewers. You're going to accuse someone of spreading misinformation. I think it's important you should get your facts right. Um, I was, uh, my, my, it wasn't just the Free Speech Union account, it was my personal account and the account of the Daily Skeptic that were closed by PayPal, and they were closed by PayPal in September of this year, not 2020. And whilst PayPal did cite uh, spreading misinformation about the COVID-19 vaccines as one of several reasons they ran up the flagpole for doing it, um, uh, that was on the Daily Skeptic, not Twitter. Um, and um, they subsequently resiled because they restored my accounts about two weeks later after I kicked up an almighty fuss in the media and in Parliament. But apart from that, spot on. Um, <laughs> uh, freedom of speech should not, be, should not mean freedom from consequences. I wonder if you'd include what happened to Salman Rushdie earlier this year as a consequence of uh, free speech. But look, before we get into the substance of this, I just want to... Um, tell you how puzzled I was by one of the phrases. This house believes woke culture has gone too far. It was the conjunction of the words woke and culture, because what is woke culture? So Christian civilization has the King James Bible, the Cathedral of Notre Dame, the ceiling of the Cistern Chapel, uh, Handel's Messiah. Modernism has Tchaikovsky, Picasso, Frank Lloyd Wright, Virginia Woolf. What art and culture has the woke cult given rise to? Uh, She-Hulk, attorney at law? Um, uh, Meghan Merkel's podcast? Uh, the collected works of Owen Jones? Um, I mean, the phrase woke culture is an oxymoron, a contradiction in terms, like social distancing and military intelligence. Um, <laughs> gone too far, gone too far. Woke culture has yet to get beyond the embryo stage. It's a cultural desert, a gaping void. But perhaps I'm being too literal. I assume we're talking about the ideological movement, uh, the intersectionality cult, the oppression Olympics, uh, the uh, critical theories, as James Lindsay would put it, the grievance industrial complex, the great awakening, Wokers Day, what um, Orwell would have referred to as a smelly little orthodoxy. So first let me acknowledge, Alex, that um, the moral impulse underpinning this movement is laudable. Uh, wanting to reduce prejudice and discrimination and improve outcomes for historically disadvantaged groups is an admirable goal. Uh, we can quibble about the inconsistent ways in which woke moral standards are applied. In fact, let's quibble. Um, if you think slavery is abhorrent, why focus on the historical involvement of Britain and America in the slave trade and turn a blind eye to the enslavement of nigh on two million Uyghurs in contemporary China or the 200,000 people imprisoned in labor camps in North Korea? If you care about women's rights, why neglect the plight of women in Iran who risk being beaten to death by the religious police if they don't wear the hijab? If you care about social injustice, why obsess over the inequality of different identity groups and ignore class inequalities, surely a much more pervasive source of injustice? I often suspect the reason this doctrine has gained such purchase in private schools and elite universities is so people who, according to traditional, a traditional left-wing perspective, are extraordinarily privileged, can claim to be victims of oppression. I'm also puzzled by the stubborn refusal of the social justice warriors to acknowledge any of the good things about Britain, as well as itemizing the bad. 
Yes, the British Empire participated in the slave trade, but then so did every other empire, stretching back to ancient Greece and beyond. What makes the British Empire exceptional is that we were the first empire in history to pass a law abolishing slavery and commit blood and treasure to ending it across the world. The depiction of these confrontations reflects broader cultural and ideological conflicts. The video serves as a microcosm of the larger debates surrounding identity, social justice and political correctness. By showcasing extreme instances of behaviour, it amplifies the tensions and highlights the challenges of navigating contentious issues in a polarised environment. The portrayal of confrontational behaviour serves to illustrate the difficulties of engaging in meaningful dialogue when deeply held beliefs are at stake. In summary, the compilation captures a range of encounters involving individuals with strong beliefs and ideologies. The portrayal of these interactions emphasizes the tendency for discussions to become confrontational and hostile. By focusing on extreme examples of behavior, the video aims to provoke strong emotional reactions and cast doubt on the validity of the viewpoints expressed. The content reflects broader cultural clashes and serves as a reminder of the challenges involved in navigating ideological conflicts. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below and for more content like this, be sure to subscribe to the channel.